Hello and you are very welcome back to Film Resolved and today's episode is a really quick unscheduled video because I'm really excited about this new feature that was just released with the beta of DaVinci Resolve 17 so if you if you missed the uh, their introduction video of that definitely check it out this is a huge update with a lot of cool new features and this is one that I'm potentially most excited about that and one other thing um the color warper which I'll get onto in a separate video but today we're checking out the false color and there's a few reasons I'm very excited about this um one is that false color has been my go-to exposure method um when shooting for a good while now basically ever since I got access to there is a company that um, for a good while now, about two or three years, that has done a third party plugin of false color and it's awesome and it is well priced, but, um, you know, it wasn't really necessary. It's a, it's not, it's a nice to have, not a need to have. So the fact that it is now included in Resolve, um, that's pretty much like the main reason I love DaVinci Resolve so much because if it's an amazing feature out there and it's not in Resolve yet, you can bet your ass they're working on it and that will be in there soon. So, all tests for a new node and I would recommend always adding false color to, you know, the last node in the tree to make sure you're seeing what the actual effect is so far. Um, open FX and it's not that far down, you could of course type in false color, but it's under the Resolve Effects Color um, plugins and I'll drop that on there. Now, there is creative mode with some interesting presets such as night vision which you could of course dial in or thermal so you could do kind of predator vision mode with a bit of dialing that in i'm sure someone will come with, up with presets for that fairly soon um, and then there's exposure guide which we'll cover a little later on for more kind of custom because if we come into a specific camera model right now the only options that are available are all black magic cameras so which is why I say I'll get onto the exposure guide in creative mode in a moment because you can kind of customize it. But for this, I'm shooting on the Pocket Cinema Camera 6K and it was ISO 400. And because this is B Raw, we can come into our Camera Raw tab and confirm the ISO there. Um, so if you're completely new to false color, uh, a short and quick answer, I suppose, to what it actually is is it's this kind of visual graphic overlay and the different colors correspond to different IRE values, i.e. this kind of pinky skin tone is the top, maxes out at about 50% 50, 50 IRE and goes down probably as low as, from the looks of things, about 45% IRE. Anything red, as you can see, is where we're getting into clipping. Um, green is middle gray for this camera and you can actually turn on labels if you didn't know these things off the top of your head. Um, and then, you know, so basically at a glance, without having to find and hunt through your vector scope or sorry, your waveform, um, at a glance, you can see exposure values and it leaves no guesswork because you're not finding things within a scope. It's right there on the image overlaid uh, and super quick and easy. So here's an example where I'd use it. So light skin, like mine, should be in the pink. And as you can see, I'm slipping through a smidgen uh, hotter than that and say for example in this case we definitely don't want our skin tones over 50% IRE we want a nice moody looking shot well all we have to do then is to start dropping down our exposure until none of that key side skin tone is slipping through and if I turn off that we can kind of see how that looks and this is what's really handy about this for me personally up until now, without false color, here's how I'd go about doing that kind of precise movement or a precise adjustment. Um, I'll add a new node after this. And this is pretty easy to read this waveform. Um, I'm going to set this back to what I had been of zero. It's pretty obvious that this is our skin tones and that a smidgen of our skin tones is slipping above 50% IRE. Um, but not every waveform is as easy to read as this, you know, we have not a whole lot going on in the frame and the only kind of thing in the middle of the frame that is skin tones is this or maybe you don't have the uh, access or the hardware to power those gpu accelerated scopes in which case you wouldn't be able to colorize that so that could leave a bit of guesswork maybe you're not that used to waveforms just yet and that's where false color comes in 
Um, but for me, up until this point, I would, if I'm doing a precise adjustment, I would add the node, I would do a power window. And I'll just make sure that our power window's turned on. I would throw it over where I'm looking to analyze, like so. We can go Shift H to highlight that. And then we can see that on our scopes and we can go, okay, that is our swab of skin tones and we are a smidge over. And I'll do my adjustment to bring that under and around there. And then we could turn off Shift H and you know, you've gotten the same kind of exposure and we can confirm that with our false color. See, nothing peeking through. Um, but where this is beneficial, is I might go, okay, we got our skin tones to be at 50% IRE max. I'm happy with that, but I'm not happy with the contrast. So I'll lift that up. Okay, now I'm happy with contrast. I want a bit more saturation. Now I'm happy with saturation. We can then switch that back on and go, oh, because of that increase in contrast, our skin has slipped a smidge over and we can just adjust that really quick again and then turn it back off. And I haven't had to add another power window. I haven't had to shift H. This is just much quicker. And I can pretty much guarantee you going forward, you will basically always see a disabled node at the end of all of my node trees that will be the um, false color because it's just so quick and easy and beneficial. Now, don't worry if you're not a black magic shooter because let's say, for example, this was from a different camera. Let's say this is from a Sony A7S III. And we're also going for a totally different look. And we say we want our skin tones to peak at around 60% IRE, not a problem. So let's reset this and we'll turn on our false color. We'll come into creative and we'll make sure we're on exposure guide. So we can see with our scales turned on and our labels switched on, we get some kind of default values, but we can edit all this. So what we can do is go show sliders. We'll come down to our little skin tone color here and we'll make the top of this 60% IRE and say the bottom 55% IRE. So we have a much tighter window so we can get nice and precise. Then we can start to raise this up until we start to just start to slip through there. So back a smidge like that. Switch that off. And now we've gone for a totally different look with a different camera that required a different, you know, skin tone IRE point. And we can, using the custom kind of parameters within false color, can make that work to our camera and our scenario. Uh, so you're not just reliant on the specific camera model mode. And who knows, maybe going forward, they'll add more camera models. I, I wouldn't bank on that. So, um, yeah, definitely get used to having a look under creative and exposure guide and playing around with those settings and finding parameters that work for you. Um, I think this is really exciting. It's definitely going to speed up my workflow crazily. And one last thing I'd say about false color, if you're not used to it, is this is really, really handy for matching uh, camera angles. Because uh, again, you don't have to go hunting through the waveform to find reference points for balancing, you know, exposure. So that's super, super cool. Stick around because I'm going to do a quick video as well on the color warper, because that again is a massive, massive addition and is super powerful. So definitely stick around for that. Ooh.